Oh, howdy y'all, grab yourself a drink, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Patch 3.20 is bringing a new difficulty mode called Ruthless. Ruthless is something you can play in addition to or instead of the existing hard mode rule sets of Solo, Southbound and Hardcore, so you can play any combination that you want of these. I do think that the most popular of these is going to be Ruthless Trade Enabled Softcore, and the second most popular is going to be Ruthless Solo, Southbound Hardcore, although of course I could be wrong on that, that is just projection based upon what people who are playing Ruthless in the alpha seem to think. In the background, I'm gonna show some footage of my playthrough. This is just going to be a few specific moments and that's gonna be sped up by a factor that's displayed in the corner of your screen there. So how does Ruthless differ from the core game? The main differences are item scarcity. Typically in the campaign, your character in Act 6 is strong enough to beat Act 9, you just can't get there yet. In Ruthless, you've got much worse gear. You're probably using scoured or magic jewelry and a mixture of magic and rare items in other slots. And your character in Act 6 is strong enough to carefully and methodically progress through Act 6. You're not yet at a point that you could beat Arakali or even Depraved Trinity if you're put into a fight against them. You definitely need to upgrade your character before you can do that. Item drops in Ruthless are a big deal in a way that they just aren't in the normal game. In the normal game, if you get a really, really good rare amulet while you're leveling, you identify something, maybe it's a turquoise amulet, and it's just got a great combination of stats couple of good resists, good life, and a couple of other useful things to your character. This might make you get through an act four minutes faster than you otherwise would. In Ruthless though, it may be the difference between beating it at all right now. You can get some huge drops in the axe, like a determination or greater multiple projectile support. Both of these will be an enormous boost if you get them. And by contrast, if you're playing in the core game, then maybe one playthrough in 10, you'll get yourself something like a divine orb during the axe. That's very rare, and that's about it. That's about all you can get. That's a huge power boost. You get a tabular as well, but even then, that's not something that's as substantial as getting a GMP in Ruthless is. Additionally, there's a whole lot of currency items that can drop during the axe that will set you up somewhat as well. You get a Vile Orb or an Alchemy Orb, and this is a really exciting drop during the campaign in Ruthless. Now, because your gearing is so much weaker, lots of your resists will come from the tree and from helping Alira. Classes and ascendancies that have got good access to resists on the tree are far better than ones that don't. This means you will have less damage on the tree, and I expect that over time this will severely limit build diversity. When we go into Ruthless, build diversity will be high because it's a brand new meta, people haven't worked out what's best yet, but I do think we will see a reduction in build diversity compared to the core game. And this is similar to the other hard modes as well. The hardcore rule set definitely tightens and restricts the available builds that are good, and the solo self found one does so in other ways as well. Another thing that's really different is that you're gonna swap around gems a lot while you're leveling. Through the campaign, you'll change skills and gems a little, swapping to a level 28 gem when you get one, going from no supports to imperfect supports, and going from imperfect supports to good supports over time. Ideally, you'll be working towards getting the best supports for your build, but that's not something you're likely to have until quite some way into maps. And even then, you'll have big upgrades like trying to get quality versions of those supports, so I wanted to answer the question, who will find Ruthless fun? Because I think this is going to be a polarizing game mode. There'll be people who try it and who are genuinely disappointed. There'll be people who try it and who are really surprised by how much more fun they find it than the core game. What I want you to ask yourself is one question. Do I have more fun before I establish a full atlas and unlock the eighth favorite map slot in a league? Or do I have more fun after I've done those milestones? My answer is before, because I have more access to failable content. But there's nothing objectively wrong if you answer the opposite, if you have more fun once your atlas is fully established. So if you answered after to that question, then I would suggest that you don't play Ruthless. And I'd honestly suggest you maybe consider playing standard over temporary leagues as well, because you'll get to spend more time in your favourite part of the league. If on the other hand you answer that you have more fun beforehand, then Ruthless will extend the fun part of the league for you, and is well worth considering. And if you answer that you don't usually reach that far in progression, then Ruthless may or may not be for you. Maybe it's worth a try at some point. Maybe it isn't. I'll leave that decision with you. I do expect that Ruthless and Solo Self Found will actually compete quite a bit. Now, a lot of people think of Ruthless as something you would play alongside Solo Self Found for the sort of ultimate hard mode, the ultimate constraint of gear. I don't think that these two rule sets are going to play very well together. I may be wrong here, but my current early feeling is that if you're playing in Ruthless and Solo Self Found, you're going to be in a situation where it takes a very, very, very long time to get together a useful set of support gems for one character. For this reason, I would actually consider it a pick one setting. 
peak ruthless or solo self found depending which sounds more fun and both of these rule sets have some pretty important things in that any item drop that can happen can give you access to new build options that is the case in both ruthless and solo self found and it's why i think they're very similar but i don't recommend playing both rule sets together unless you're pretty obsessed with the game and you are perfectly fine with playing an incomplete build for 40 50 60 hours because you don't have any way to target farm things like determination or greater multiple projectile support and as a result you may find that the build you want to play is gated behind these items and is just not available to you for a long period of time if you're tossing up between playing one of these difficulty modes between either the solo self found rule set or the ruthless setup i would suggest that you play one that you haven't played before which for the vast majority of people will mean that you play ruthless this time and then you'll be in the best position possible to decide which of these rule sets is more fun for you in the future. I wanted to next mention build diversity and gem availability. This is somewhat counterintuitive, but I think that not having access to all gems will actually boost build diversity somewhat. Players will feel pressured to play builds that don't rely upon popular supports or auras because those gems will not be widely available. And you'll also change gems because of what you get access to. For example, let's say that you wanted to play a hit based bow character. Your obvious early choice of skill is Split Arrow. Split Arrow is fantastic in this mode because the gem itself has additional projectiles baked into it. But then let's say you get somewhat lucky and have a greater volley drop. Now at this point, you've just unlocked the option of playing Lightning Arrow instead, if you prefer. So you're now in this situation where the items that drop for you can send you down divergent build paths, which is something that doesn't happen in the core game because if you wanted to play Lightning Arrow, you know that you've got access to it from early on, you've got a clear way to make a plan to get it, and you also know exactly where to get greater multiple projectile support, and so you know you've got access to everything you need to make the build at least mechanically function. You're not going to start with something and then change into it later because you don't need to do that. In Ruthless you do, and that's where I think that there'll be an actual increase in build diversity as a result because people will have access to different items and therefore will build their characters differently. I do not think that this is going to be a permanent and lasting effect. I think it's going to be something that is more league start specific. Once the league has been going for a couple of weeks, I think we'll see a situation where pretty much any support gem that you want can be found pretty easily in trade. And at that point, we'll see more of a convergence on the known best builds. But that's going to take a lot longer to happen in Ruthless than it does in the standard base game. So I next wanted to talk about major stumbling points throughout the campaign. There are a couple of fights that I found meaningfully harder than everything else. I'm not going to include Act 5 and 6. Act 5 and 6 I ran when I had bad technical issues on my household internet, and that meant that I died multiple times to lag while fighting Innocence, and I don't really have a sense as to how difficult that fight is. Intuitively, it feels like it should be pretty tough, but it's also something where you can usually abuse Portal Grace periods, and so you can definitely get through the Innocence fight with a little bit of cheesing of portals. The very, very hardest fight that I felt during the campaign was the original Labyrinth, the first one, the level 33 one. The reason for this was the third Azaro fight, you just start losing control of the arena because of all the trash monsters. Now I did this immediately after Vol, and I think that was a mistake. I should have probably done Calm and Duresso first. What I underestimated was Azaro's capacity to take control of the arena by putting in an enormous amount of trash mobs. Now this meant that Azaro flooded the zone with trash mobs, I didn't have phasing, even a phasing flask at this point, and I didn't have any way to really deal with them other than just beat them down slowly. But while you're beating them down, you've also got to hit Azaro as well. I'm using a one link firestorm at this point because it's the best skill I've got access to, and this was quite simply not up to the task. I wasn't in a position where an Azaro slam would kill me or anything like that, and I don't think I took any of them during the fight, but still, it's one of those things where you're just running around feeling like you're completely out of control of the fight for some time. You could definitely adjust this though by doing that fight a little bit later, picking up a gem level or two more, or trading for a support before attempting it. The second hardest fight in the campaign was probably Aedas in Act 9. Act 9 Aedas is something you don't normally fear even in Gauntlet rule set, because it's a fight where positioning is important, but positioning is trivialized by your ability to use teleport move skills. Aedas is the lightning boss in the factory that has the lightning slow beams and also has an earthquake variant skill. Aedas constrains your ability to move around the arena by the use of the lightning beams and also has a number of things you must dodge at all costs. This combination is really, really dangerous in Ruthless and I think that this is going to be one of the hardest fights for a lot of players. The third hardest thing I encountered during the campaign was the Merciless Labyrinth. 
We're not talking about the Azaro fight here, however. By this point, my build was up and running. I had a decent link for dealing damage to him. No, we're talking about the trash monsters within it. The trash monsters within the Merciless Labyrinth were pretty dangerous. And a big factor there is that they have turned a corner in being tanky. And so you start getting a number of rare monsters that have pretty scary mods and that can build up in numbers and can be quite overwhelming. Now this is going to be different in 320 with the new rare monsters mod system replacing Arch Nemesis. We're going to have to see how that plays out in practice. Anyways, I had a lot of fun playing through the campaign in Ruthless and what I want to do next with respect to Ruthless is go through the Ruthless Atlas as we see it at the moment and possibly do that on stream. So that'll be something that'll come up later, but there is another video today which will be on all of the news that comes out, which includes the Kerak mods and a bunch of other stuff. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. May your Valobs have interesting results.